Since its inception in 1998, the RoboSub competition has seen some amazing innovations, stiff competition, and an international following. This year, we're adding to that legacy. The second round of qualifying runs just finished. Let's see how it went. A range of setbacks and challenges kept 10 teams from even getting out of the chute. So the first of today's qualifying runs just came out. McGill, how'd it go for you guys? Uh, well, we had everything set up last night, but when we went into the uh, pool today, it just started spinning in circles. So we didn't uh, accomplish any of our objectives. So how'd your qualifying runs go? Uh, not as we expected. Uh, we had a problem. We changed the coating, then once we changed the coating, we added weights on it so the motors weren't strong enough to uh, carry the extra weight, so it kept spinning in circles. Uh, so um, we had a programming port on the outside that we hoped would uh, help program it, but it was actually acting as a rudder and causing it to spin. So we'll have to change some of those things and, and make sure it doesn't happen in the future. Reykjavik University was unable to recover from Friday's flood. They were a scratch on their second run. So how are your qualifying runs? Uh, I think we did pretty good considering uh, the troubles we've had this, this last couple of weeks. I'm really proud of our team and I'm proud of the way this thing performed. Uh, we have a little bit of work to do for next year, but I think we're uh, heading in the right direction. Last night we had some problems with our memory on our computer. Really everything just fried. So we tried to get everything up and running today, but just couldn't get it working. It was working when we had it outside the robot. As soon as we sealed it up, communicate. Our thrusters weren't working, so. Just had to scrap the run today. We were able to maintain a heading and um, we couldn't dive, we couldn't activate the rear thrusters. Not really sure why. It seems like it might be an electrical issue now. We saw from the microcontroller that it activated thrusters, but they just didn't, they didn't actually move. So we're not really sure at this point. Yesterday, the compass was not working. Today, the compass was not working and the thrusters were not working at all. The front and forward uh, thrusters were all messed up. The, I think the pins broke, so we're really disappointed about this, uh, both qualifying rounds. Well, it didn't go very well. Yesterday we had a lot of problems going straight, and it just didn't work out for us. And then today we came back, we thought we had solutions for the problem, but none of them really worked. So we had the exact same conditions yesterday as we do today. So how'd you guys do on your two runs? Well, on the first run, we ended up actually frying a power supply immediately beforehand, so we couldn't run it. We had to uh, get out of that one. Uh, we re-rigged the entire computer as a different voltage setting uh, with all new parts and a new motherboard for today. So within a day, we had to reconfigure the entire robot. And fortunately, uh, on our first run down, we hit the bottom too hard and possibly uh, shaked up the hard drive, uh, causing a freeze up, and then we couldn't reconnect to the computer. Well, we had some hard times this week with all hardware and whatnot, but these guys fought hard. We tried, and at the end, we were able to run one tethered run in the qualifier. Dave was real nice and let us try that. And we were able to go to the pinger, grab the man, and surface in the octagon. Four teams had mixed results, but did not have strong enough results to make it to the finals. Keist was forced to stick with Friday's qualifying run, where they cleared the gate and passed one path segment. We just had our second qualifying run, and it didn't go too well. Well. We prepared a lot more than what we just did, and uh, we feel quite sorry about that. We feel bad about it. North Carolina State cleared the gate and hit one path segment. All right, so you guys had a little trouble yesterday. Any better today? Yes, sir. We got to find the buoys today, which was better than we did yesterday, and we're looking forward to doing better than we did last year. So, Wolf Pack. <laughs> UCF has had some nice success in the past. Unfortunately, they ran into some unexpected power issues at the last minute and were only able to clear the gate as time expired. Today we actually had some technical difficulties. It seemed like the uh, voltage regulator that talks to our motors uh, was having some issues where it was blinking on and off. We had this earlier in the day, but we changed out the components thinking that would work. We had a practice, that went fine. The second we tried starting our mission, it messes up again. So we're just gonna have to spend tonight looking and actually finding out what's the problem. The Ibotics team fell a bit short, but did put points on the board, clearing the gate, contacting the red buoy, and passing the two path segments. So yesterday we got on the water and uh, we were just trying to figure out what's going on. The compass wasn't connecting. And it turned out we had a leak in, leak in one of the hulls. So last night we changed that, uh, the gasket for it, and today we got in and got to go straight through the gate and hit a buoy and miss the, uh, the hedge. After all points were tallied, seven teams advanced to the finals. The only high school team in the competition, Amador Valley, made a big splash when they passed the gate, contacted a buoy, and nearly cleared the hedge, along with two path segments. They entered the finals with 1,813 points. All right, so you just got out from your second run. How'd it go? It went pretty well. We uh, went through the gate and uh, hit one buoy, followed a path, and uh, went through the hedge. It's a a lot better than we did yesterday. I mean, we spent the night just writing some code and uh, fixing what we could. 
The Kyushu Institute had a great second run, qualifying with 2009 points. Dude Shaka. Yeah, this time, yo, we are happy. We succeeded in the gate passing and the docking way, but that is different car, but okay. And also we can we can go through the halves and the robot target to the window, but finished. <laughs> The Naval Academy had a strong showing as well, with 2,931 points. You had a little trouble yesterday, how'd it go today? It went great today. Yesterday we had a little trouble with our computer. We, uh, it was keeping rebooting, it was going in a reboot cycle, so we fixed our problems with that, with the power supply, and today it worked great, everything worked fine. We hit all the objectives we missed in our qualifying run, we were able to hit when we actually did a survey run. So we're looking good for tomorrow. Maryland enjoyed a solid qualifying run. In addition to clearing the gate, they also successfully picked up and released the PVC structure. They compiled 3,344 points in qualifying. Yesterday, we had a bit of a problem with our presets, you could say, and we were doing the same thing as we are trying today. Came back today, fixed it all, sonar worked beautifully. ETS served notice that they wanted a spot in the finals. They cleared the gate, tagged two correct buoys, cleared the hedge, and passed three path segments. ETS finished with 3,834 points. Today we were able to do the uh, gate, the first pipe, the buoys in the right order, the, the next pipe, and then we navigate through the, the edge really close. Uh, we, we almost hit the low bar, and then we were able above the, the Y pipe, the, the two pipes after the edges, and then we timed out and were heading for the pinger, but we uh, didn't uh, ear it properly, so we just stopped there and took that run. University of Texas Dallas finished with 3,939 points and had a satisfying second qualifying run, clearing the gate, two path segments, and surfacing in the octagon. Yesterday we got some pipes in the hedges, and today we got some pipes uh, and the surface re surfaced in the center region, and so it's kind of a trade-off. Are you happy with it? Uh, about as happy as I can be for right now. It could be better. Uh, we, we were really trying to hit those buoys, but it didn't work out. Crowds gathered to see Cornell's last qualifying run, and the reigning champions delivered a performance to remember. They locked in a finals appearance by clearing the gate, passing four path segments, contacting a buoy, and surfacing in the octagon. They also were the only team to clear two hedges, shoot a torpedo through the window, and drop primary and secondary markers. Cornell is the team to beat, finishing with 10,771 points. Uh, today's run went actually even better than yesterday. We ran uh, nearly the entire course nearly perfectly. We missed on the torpedoes. We're going to go back to the hotel and work on that tonight. But otherwise, we dropped markers in the correct bins. We hit the correct uh, red, well, we hit a buoy. We didn't hit the correct buoys. Um, and we ran the course pretty much, which was what we were hoping to do. Think you'll ace it tomorrow? We'll see. A lot of things can go wrong in a day. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to keep working on it. We're not going to take this as anything other than we're doing the correct things now. Uh, so we're going to go back, we're going to work on our torpedoes, um, and we're hoping we'll have a good day tomorrow. If today was any indication, the finals tomorrow are going to be awesome. If you can't be here in person, you can watch it online. We're going to webcast the whole thing. It starts at about 1 p.m. Pacific time. You can go to robosub.org and patch in there. We're going to have a panel of guests. We're going to have underwater cameras. We're going to have interviews at the dock. It's going to be an awesome time. Don't miss it. Robosub.org at 1 p.m. We're even going to have Zaz Brooks from the Discovery Channel. Robo genius, star of Prototype This. We'll see you then. I'm Zaz Brooks from Prototype This on Discovery Channel. I'm here at the 13th Annual Autonomous Robot Submarine Contest. Join us for the webcast of the finals, 1 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. That's Sunday. Register for the webcast on Robosub.org. It's going to be awesome.